Denial of evolution is unique to the United States. I mean, we are the world's most advanced technological, so I mean, you could say Japan, but generally the United States is where most of the innovation still happens. People still move to the United States. Uh, and that's largely because of the intellectual capital we have, the, the general understanding of science. When you have a portion of the population that doesn't believe in that, it holds everybody back, really. Evolutionists in the United States have confused priorities. I mean, kids score near the bottom in reading, in math, in science. I mean, you could say that Somalian students do worse, but generally, the United States is behind practically every civilized country in education. An evolutionist himself said that most of biology proceeds independent of the theory of evolution. So why is this the issue that scientists want to push? I mean, isn't being able to do sums a little higher on the list of things that will be of practical benefit to Johnny? Evolution is the fundamental idea in all of life science, in all of biology. It's like, it's very much analogous to trying to do geology without believing in tectonic plates. You're just not going to get the right answer. Your whole world is just going to be a mystery instead of an exciting place. Some people say it's not possible to explain the world without evolution in billions of years. Once in a while I get people that really, that, or that claim they don't believe in evolution. And my response generally is, oh, why not? Really, why not? Your world just becomes fantastically complicated when you don't believe in evolution. Have you tried? Really, have you tried? When you're stuck with an evolutionary worldview, it's very complicated to explain things like, well, we have placental mammals and marsupial mammals that look nearly identical to one another, but they're not supposed to be closely related. Here are these ancient dinosaur bones or fossils. Here is uh, radioactivity. Here are distant stars that are just like the our star, but that are at a different point in their life cycle. Dinosaurs are supposed to have died 70 million years ago, but we find bones with unfossilized tissue still there. Sure, animals change with each new generation, but the types of changes that are observed will never amount to the kind of change that evolution requires, even given millions of years. The idea of deep time, of this of billions of years, uh, explains so much of the world around us. If you try to ignore that, your, your world view just becomes crazy. It's just uh, untenable, it's self inconsistent. Have you tried? Really, have you tried? Mutations are supposed to generate new information to get life from a single cell to humans, but they're blowing away massive amounts of the human genome with each new generation. And to explain all these things, they pile just so story on top of just so story. And if you try to ignore the problems with evolution, your worldview becomes just crazy, just untenable, itself inconsistent. And I say to the grown ups, if you want to deny evolution and live in your, in your uh, world that's completely inconsistent with everything we observe in the universe, that's fine. But don't make your kids do it, because we need them. We need scientifically literate voters and taxpayers for the future. And I say to evolutionists, if you want to believe evolution and live in your, in your world that's completely inconsistent with everything that we observe in the universe, that's fine. But don't make it your mission to brainwash our kids. You can't even teach them to read properly. And that's the first step. We need engineers that can build stuff and solve problems by examining both sides of an issue rather than attempting to suppress or censor all the evidence for a worldview that they're uncomfortable with. It's just a really hard thing. It's, it's really a hard thing. It's great when evolutionists talk about science or have science programs for kids on TV that focus on things that are observable and repeatable that we all agree on. But when you start talking about your faith and what happened millions of years ago when no one was there to observe anything, a bit of tolerance would go a long way, don't you think? I mean, is your way of understanding the past the only possible way to explain what we observe today? Of course not. I mean, what you believe happened millions of years ago isn't science. It's just a belief. It's just faith. It's faith in a particular version of history that's part of your worldview. You can't prove it to be true. You know, in another couple centuries, that, that 
worldview, I'm sure, will be, it just won't exist. I mean, it's, it's, there's no evidence for it. So. You know, in another couple of centuries, that worldview, I'm sure, will be, it just won't exist. Everyone will know the truth. So, people still send their kids to school, and that's largely because they don't know anything else to do with their kids. But when you have a majority of kids that aren't even literate, asking them to be scientifically literate is a bit of a leap, to be honest. An evolutionist himself said that most of biology proceeds independent of the theory of evolution. So why is this the issue that scientists want to push? There are some lies in our science books. I taught it for 15 years. Even though I'm not teaching it anymore, I still like to study. It's so many neat things to learn. We're going to cover some of that tonight. I'm not against science, I'm not against schools, I'm not against teachers. Because most of them don't know what they believe, you have to tell them. They teach the kids, it all started with the Big Bang 20 billion years ago. What exploded? <laughs> yes, boys and girls, you see, nothing exploded and uh, here we are. So I asked this professor if I could ask him some questions about the Big Bang. I said, where did all this matter come from? He said, well, we don't know that for sure. I said, well, sir, would you please tell me where the laws came from? The universe is run by laws, gravity, centrifugal force, inertia. Who gave the laws? He said, we don't know that either. I said, sir, could you tell me where the energy came from? You know, it takes energy to make a big bang. Who bought the gas to run this machine anyway? Hmm? He said, we don't know that either. I said, uh, sir, could I ask you another question? He said, sure. What else would you like to know? <laughs> what else? What do you mean, else? You haven't told me nothing yet. Okay, now, sir, hold it. If I told you that I believe God created the heaven and the earth like the Bible teaches, you're going to say, and where did God come from? And I don't know. But you said, well, we don't know that for sure. We don't know that either. We don't Don't know tell me either. my theory is religious and yours is science. Oh, no, sir, they're both religious. Evolution is a religion. You have to believe. So ask the professor, where did the matter come from? He said, I don't know. So basically, I believe in the beginning God and you believe in the beginning dirt. O oh, Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust, avoiding profane and vain babblings and oppositions of science, falsely so-called, which some professing have heard concerning the faith.